What's up guys and welcome back to a new course overview about object-oriented programming. In the next couple of episodes, we're going to focus on various ideas around object-oriented programming. Up until now, you have probably learned something that is called procedural PHP. So you probably created a function which acts on data structures and that function would be called maybe inside another function or in your main to print it out. And this is not a bad thing because this is the PHP or any other programming language that you start learning whenever you came to the end of all the beginner's topics, you need to focus on object-oriented PHP. And you might think, well, this is pretty difficult. And to be honest, it is in the beginning. Well, I don't want to make you scared, but by now, I expect you to have learned procedural PHP because that will make it a lot easier learning object-oriented PHP. Obviously, I won't be saying that object-oriented programming is better than procedural or vice versa, but procedural PHP does not do any harm and I even recommend you to use it for adding new behavior for the same set of objects, scaling the behavior, just adding a new function and none of the other functions will be changed, and lastly, just for a simple check or conditional output. With object-oriented programming, you are allowed to group related tasks or actions into classes to produce effective code. And maybe you are curious about why you actually should learn object-oriented PHP if procedural PHP does whatever you want your application to do. Well, there are a lot of reasons. And I think that one of the most important reasons is that you can reuse the code. This will also save you a lot of time and shrink your project because you don't need to repeat yourself. Probably every company that uses programming uses this concept. So whenever you're going on a job interview, it's pretty much a must to know object-oriented programming. A big reason why that is, is because it's pretty easy to use it whenever you work with groups. And since you will be working on the same project with group members, it makes the harmony in a group better because if you use procedural PHP, every developer will be programming on his own way. And if you use object-oriented programming, there will be a sort of a structure inside of your code. Later on, I will explain to you what the model view controller pattern is, better known as the MVC, in a separate video. There are a couple requirements before you start learning object-oriented PHP. The first one is that you need to know the basics, and I will add a link down below of my PHP for Beginners course, which is an 8 hour long course about all the beginners topics of PHP and MySQLi. This course will, this course will kind of be a follow-up of the previous course, so I expect you to know everything that I have discussed in my previous course. The topics that I discussed are, well, variables and data types, so float, string, booleans, array, objects and resources, operators, so arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison operators and so on, control structures, so conditional statements, switches, while loops and so on, functions, superglobals, which is a must to know, databases, so how we could create a database, how we could insert data, how we could select it, update it, delete it, or order it. And you need to know how to create a script. So I expect you to know how to connect to a database, how to work with error handlers, how to save data, how to create prepared statements, and how to hash passwords. In my previous course, I focused on MySQL. What I want to do for object-oriented programming is to use PDO, which stands for PHP Data Objects. And the reason why I'm using PDO is because it's kind of a built-in class that comes with PHP and it makes it very easy for you to interact with your database. What we could do is to create a database.php file where we store our connection and built-in functions that PDO has created for us. And I want to show you a couple of examples. So as you could see on my screen, there is a function called query that will prepare the statement, which will insert the data. We could also create an execute function, which will execute the prepared statement that we created. And a pretty cool thing that we could do is to create a function, well, I like to call it result set, which will execute the prepared statement that we created, and it will return a set of array of objects. 
And as you can see, we're using our execute function in our result set function. We could also make a function that returns a single row from the database. And we can get a row count to do a check. So let's say that someone is trying to log in. So we can count the rows. Well, if the rows that are equal to a login name is greater than zero, we can return the single row. As you might know from my previous course, you need to take care of a lots of things like creating a connection, creating a query, fetching the results into an array, use SQL injection, and so on. These things will be taken care of when using PDO. PDO will also keep you safe from many vulnerabilities. The last thing that I want to add is that this is object-oriented from the beginning. From my personal experience, I know that object-oriented programming will be very difficult in the beginning and you will hear a lot of new terms. But I will try to go through them as good as possible. That being said, this was it for this episode and in the next episode I want to start with classes and objects in PHP. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.